What's up everyone, I'm Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and so far in this course, we have only run our app on an iPhone in portrait mode in light mode. And in this video, we're gonna make our app adaptable for all the different ways we might deploy it. And that means we're gonna make sure that our app looks good and runs well in portrait as well as landscape mode. It runs well on the iPhone as well as the iPad, and it looks good in light mode as well as dark mode. Welcome back guys. Uh, in this quick video, we're just gonna do a little bit of cleanup. We're just gonna run through our app and make sure it looks good in dark mode as well as on the iPad and in landscape mode. Now this is a very simple app, so I don't think we're gonna have much to actually do, but I wanted to just run through this process for those of you who have maybe never dealt with any of this before and this is one of your first apps. So let's start by just running our app as is on the iPhone. I'm use the iPhone 12 and open it up on a simulator, of course, not in the preview. And we're gonna look at the colors first. So the phone probably is gonna be in light mode to begin with. And we have our normal colors. We have the purple going to maroon. Um, we have white backgrounds, black text. This all looks good. If I go to the ad screen, Again, white backgrounds, black text. We have a gray text field, which looks pretty good, and a purple save button. I don't think we have any issues here with the light mode, but let's change our app here to go into dark mode. So on the simulator, I'm gonna to go to open the settings. And in, the, and in your settings on the simulator, if you scroll down, there should be a developer tab here. So click open on the developer, and then you can change the appearance there to dark mode. So now this simulator should be in dark mode and let's open back up our app again and see what it looks like. Well, immediately we can see that the background is now black, which is good. The text is white and that's because all of these texts are using the dot primary color. And if you followed my Swift UI bootcamp, you're well aware that the primary and the secondary colors are naturally dynamic so that they change between light and dark mode. And this is good. Um, I do notice here that our colors the purple it, i can still see it but it is a little harder to read now that we are in dark mode because this is a dark purple on a black background so i think we should change that quickly so let's go into the assets.xc assets folder in the last video we set up our accent color and if i open up the inspector on the right side uh, and i click on this color right now the appearances is none and that means we have a universal color. So this accent color is universal, gonna be dark purple. So on light mode, in dark mode, no matter what mode it is, it's going to be this dark purple. But if we change the appearances, we can add an any and dark. And then we have a different appearance between any, which is gonna be our light mode, and the dark mode. So in the dark mode, instead of having this dark purple, I'm gonna make it a little bit more of a lighter purple so that it's a little bit easier to read on this dark background. So I'm gonna click on the dark one. I'm gonna click on the show color panel. And we're using this dark purple, but I'm gonna use maybe this lighter grape. So I think that will be a little easier to read on the dark background. I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna do the same thing for the secondary accent color. So I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna click on the color, click on the appearances, go to any and dark. And in the dark mode, Let's click on show color panel, and instead of this dark maroon, I'm gonna use this strawberry, which is a little brighter, a little easier to see in dark mode. I'm gonna just stop the preview, press play on the simulator again, and when it builds, it should be in dark mode already, but, but the color should be our new dark mode colors. So in dark mode, I have this brighter purple, which I think looks a little bit better, and the secondary accent color is this brighter pink, which actually looks awesome. And now our colors are dynamic. So if we switch back to light mode, we're gonna use that those starting colors. And if we go back to dark mode, we're gonna use these new colors. So this, this is looking pretty cool. Let's go to the add tab to make sure that it looks good as well. And there's only one issue I see here, and it's that the placeholder in the dark mode has changed colors. So we can't see the text right here that normally says uh, add something here or whatever we put as the placeholder. So let's just customize the background color on this really quickly. So I'm gonna jump into the add view. So the background right now is this color literal that we added. 
but let's use a dynamic color that will change. And if you followed my Swift UI Bootcamp, you are also aware of some of the UI colors that we can import into Swift UI. And there are some UI colors that are dynamic, like the primary and secondary colors, like this text up here. So we're going to use one of those instead of using this color literal. So let's just delete this color literal, delete this on the background, and I'm going to call color, open the parentheses, and I'm going to type a UI color dot, and then there's a bunch of UI colors that we can use here. We have our regular colors as well as if we start typing in system, we'll see there's a bunch of system colors as well. And we're going to look for the secondary system background. And, the, and all of these system colors are automatically dynamic, so they will change between light and dark mode. And now if we use the secondary system background, I think it's going to look a little better. Let's press uh, play on the simulator one more time, see what it looks like. And I'm going to go to the add. This looks good. I like this nice kind of grayish background. We can see type something here still. If we type, it should say hello, it's white text, that looks good. Uh, let's switch back to light mode just to make sure this new color still looks good in light mode. And it does, we have black text, we have our gray background, and it's looking great. And we're running this on a simulator, I enjoy doing it on a simulator once we're like kind of finished with our app. But just so you guys do know, we can always open up the canvas. and click resume on the canvas and the canvas right now is in light mode but we can change it by clicking this little computer thing here and changing the color scheme to dark mode so we'll automatically change our canvas to dark mode if we scroll down on this project to the preview section uh, we can see that the preferred color scheme is now dark and if we really wanted to we could add two different simulators here we could add a group open the brackets and I'm going to cut this navigation view and just paste it twice inside this group and the, and the first one I'll make light and the second one I'll make dark and now we can see back to back we have our light mode on the right and if I scroll down we have our dark mode so if we didn't want to run the simulator and we had a lot of things to edit I would do it like this in our preview where we can check light and dark mode really quickly just for this screen but of course we didn't have much to do so using the simulator was fine it was easier and uh, I think we're done with light and dark mode alright so this all looks great let's put it back into dark mode just because we spent the entire video in light mode and dark mode looks really cool I think uh, I think this looks awesome while we're here let's check this out by running it on landscape so we can just click this little button here to rotate the device and automatically we are rotated and there wasn't much we had to do here um, because when we formatted our screens we used things like max width we didn't set specific widths and uh, our device automatically adjusted to be horizontal one thing I do want to change is that this whole no items area looks like it's maybe a little bit too wide for my liking so let's just limit the width on this no items area so I'm going to open up the no items view and maybe on the V stack, yeah, on the V stack, right before the multi line text alignment, let's just do dot frame and let's give it a max width of maybe uh, 400, I think, will be good. So when the device is in uh, portrait mode, the width is about 350 or something like that. And uh, when it's in landscape, obviously, this is much wider. But by setting a max width, we can always just limit it. Uh, when it is landscape or when it is on a larger device as well. So if I press play one more time, run it on this horizontal, um, it should be a little bit in now and this looks a little bit better. Let's add an item, make sure it looks good. We'll say new item, save, and our new item shows up. Let's do one more, another one, save. This is looking good, it's all working. We can go into edit mode. And uh, I don't see any other issues here. So this is looking good on landscape. Let's put it back to portrait. I'm going to close this simulator because it looks good on the iPhone. And the last thing I want to do in this video is check it on the iPad. 
Uh, let's open up the iPad. So I'm going to change. So I'm going to change the simulator up here from iPhone 12, and I'm going to pick the iPhone iPad Pro 12.9 inch because it is the biggest. So it will probably be better to test on that one. And let's run the simulator one more time. I'm going to pause the video quick because uh, the fan is going crazy. So I'll be right back. So with the iPad Pro selected, let's press run on the simulator. I don't think there's going to be much that we have to do here. It should open up a new simulator. Let's do it in portrait mode first. And when it loads, uh, we do have one little issue here because it did finish loading and we can't see anything. And if I click on the back button, um, it looks like the navigation view is adding our navigation on the left side. And this is because on iPads and larger devices, the navigation view has a different style by default. And that style has this sidebar so we could have kind of tabs here. And when we click these tabs, it can open up other screens and we can still have that tab bar on the left side. So this is a really cool iPad feature, but it does not look good for what we're doing here, of course. So this is really easy to fix. We're going to jump into our uh, to-do list app.swift file which is where we have our navigation view. And on the navigation view, we're just gonna very simply add a dot navigation view style. And then we're gonna start typing in navigation view style. And here you can see a couple of the different styles. And you can play around with these on your own time, but stack navigation view style is the standard style where it's just one screen in front of the other. So that's what we want. We're gonna do stack navigation view style, open and close the parentheses, and let's run it one more time on the iPad. And you will now see our app the way we wanted to see it. Uh, and we have our first screen and we click add something, we go to our second screen. This all looks good. Uh, I can type in hello, let's add something. This looks good to me. And uh, one thing you'll probably notice is that our no items view is still limited with that max width. So instead of going to the full screen of the app, because we added that, that max width a couple minutes ago, um, this now also is max width on our iPad as well, which looks great. Let's lastly just rotate it horizontally, make sure it still looks good, and it does look good to me. And that's pretty much it for this video. We didn't do too much, obviously, because our app is so simple. Um, but we made sure it looks good in light and dark mode. We adjusted some of the colors for dark mode. We checked out our app in landscape as well as portrait, in case the user wants to turn their device. And then we checked it on iPad just to make sure it still looks good. We updated the navigation view so that it's the correct style. And now our app is pretty much ready to go. So thank you guys for watching. We have one more quick video before we finish this app, uh, but it's looking great. You guys are doing awesome. Thank you for watching. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.